Hello, and welcome to another edition of Inspector Lander. My name is Jim Hamilton, co-founder of The Gig, and each week it is my job to dissect and deconstruct a landing page I found out in the wild to help you become a better marketing strategist. Now, quick note before we get started today, I don't have any data on how this landing page is performing, so the conclusions I'm able to draw are limited, but the benefit of this exercise is to show you how to think strategically so you can provide valuable feedback to clients to help them improve their marketing performance. One other note, um, if you want to download a copy of this landing page checklist you see here on the right hand side so you can use it in your own work with clients, you can go to www.thegig.io slash checklist. You'll be able to download it for free there. All right, so today we're looking at a landing page from a brand called Content Mavericks. Now, I've been getting ads uh, for this offer for months now, so I suspect this page is doing very, very well. And as we dig into it, uh, you'll see why. So I've got the URL here, uh, so you can check it out. Uh, if you like, the objective here is sales, so they're, they're going for a low ticket sale here. So we're gonna start by looking at this section above the fold. So some of the criteria we look at here when we're analyzing the prehead, the headline, and the subhead are, is it unique, is it useful, is it urgent, is it ultra specific, and does it clearly communicate the promise? Now, these four U's here uh, I borrowed from Agora. Um, this is the criteria that they use to analyze headlines. So if we look at the headline, uh, or sorry, we'll start at the prehead. The prehead says, new playbook, all right? The headline says, turn your blog into a seven-figure revenue channel in 12 to 24 months using the ski slope strategy. The subhead says, learn step-by-step -step how I turned a blog into a $112,500 per month revenue channel without writing a single word. All right, so uh, starting with the prehead, I think it's a bit weak, um, you know, new playbook. Now, new is a bit of a, you know, it's a, it's a power word, you could say, right? So anytime you can position something as new, it creates some, some curiosity and creates some intrigue. But I think I would have preferred to see a call out here in terms of their avatar and who it's for, uh, as opposed to just new playbook. But the headline itself is very clear with the promise, right? Turn your blog into a seven-figure revenue channel. I think really, really solid. Um, the fact that they're talking about blogging in the headline may turn some people off because blogging is kind of old school and most people's perception of blogging is that it's dead, you know, or that it's, you know, it's only good for SEO. Uh, so it's, it's possible that it's a turnoff, but the fact that it's unconventional or that it is something that's typically unsexy does also increase the curiosity factor. So I think it, I think it works both ways. Uh, the 12 to 24 month timeline section here, I like because that makes it feel much more believable, right? The way that these kind of headlines work typically is, you know, it's as short a time frame as possible, right? So it'd be like in 90 days or less or 30 days or less or in the next 14 days, right? But 12 to 24 months, you know, that's, that's a long time, right? So they're really being upfront about that, right? And it's, you know, you can almost argue that it's, um, it's a damaging admission, right? In the sense that it's gonna take you a long time, right? This isn't gonna work overnight. This is not gonna happen quickly. Um, so I like that. And then the last piece of this headline is using the ski slope strategy. So this hints at some kind of unique mechanism, right? Some kind of proprietary method or strategy, which helps to create curiosity and also helps to, uh, install the belief in people that, you know, this might work even when many other things they've tried have failed. All right. So that's great. Then if we move into the subhead here, I think the subhead is really, really strong. Uh, learn step by step how I turned a blog into a $112,500 per month revenue channel without writing a single word. So we've got learn step by step, which is great. Uh, makes it feel nice and easy. And then this number here, it's a round number, but it's not like, it's not a perfectly round number, right? Like it's not $100,000 per month or $50,000 per month. It's $112,500 per month. And oftentimes, irregular numbers like that work much more effectively than just nice, even round numbers like 100,000, right? Uh, and then the other piece that's, that's really interesting here is this without writing a single word. So that's also addressing an objection right up front because, you know, anyone who sees this blog uh, piece in the headline might be turned off just because they don't know how to write or they're not writers so they don't like writing or maybe they do like writing but they don't want to have to write reams and reams of content right so this is great 
Uh, moving on to the next step in our analysis here, uh, looking at the page speed uh, from Pingdom, we've got, uh, oh, it's actually 1.89. Sorry, I, I, um, I miscalculated that. Um, but ultimately, we're looking for a load time of under two seconds here. So this is great. This is clocking in at 1.89 seconds. So super fast load time. Really important, especially for paid traffic, because the longer your page takes to load, the less people who are going to wait for it to load, right? And therefore, the more drop off you're going to see between, you know, the, the amount of unique clicks that you have compared to the amount of actual landing page views you get. Next, we're going to move into the image or video. In this case, it's an image and it's a product shot. Um, I really like this product shot. It's 3D, right? So, you know, you kind of get this feel of like it's this tangible product. That's a, you know, a really nice benefit of using these kind of 3D mockups. Uh, it's got a cool design, right? And the design uh, lines up nicely with the unique mechanism here, the ski slope strategy, which is also the product name. Uh, and it's big enough to even fit a little how-to subhead in here, which is really nice. So I like that. Uh, and then next up, we'll look at the mobile view. So I use a website called Responsive PX um, to look at the mobile view. And so we're just going to fire this up here. And so we can see that, yeah, it looks pretty nice. Um, oh, th so these testimonials look to be a little off center, um, but otherwise it looks really nice. Uh, you know, there's, there's nice stuff, lots of space in between these images. Uh, you know, the, the columns aren't too narrow. This is a little blocky, but you know, overall as we skim the page, uh, it definitely looks like it was optimized for mobile. So yeah, we'll just continue to scroll down here and just see if there's anything that jumps out. No, looks pretty good. Awesome. Um, lastly, we're going to look at the call to action, right? So this call to action above the fold, it's first of all visible above the, above the fold because I've got my page narrowed here, it doesn't show, but, but otherwise it would be. Um, and I really like this CTA. There's a lot to like here. Number one, it's got an animated uh, effect on the button, which, which actually I didn't put here. Animated effect when hovering over the button. Uh, it's a nice big button, right? A lot of times you see people, uh, <laughs> they have tiny little buttons that are just not very inviting, especially on mobile. You want a nice big juicy button that seems really inviting to click. The yellow creates a nice contrast with the rest of the page, which is awesome. The button copy is written from a first person perspective, like from the buyer's perspective, right? So it's saying, yes, I want to turn my blog into a seven figure revenue channel. These are typically the, the way that, you know, this is typically the best practice to write a button copy is to write it in the, in this kind of first person, like from the customer perspective. So I really like that. It's also got the price in there, which is awesome, right? So anyone who's clicking on this button, they know this is $4.99, right? And of course the price is great. Like that's super, super cheap. Anyone can afford $4.99. So having it in the, uh, in the button copy, just really make sure that, you know, anyone who clicks through is going to be, is going to be super qualified, right? As far as going to the cart page. Uh, and then if we open this link in a new tab, we'll see that, yes, it does work. So awesome. Uh, next we'll move to what's below the fold. All right. So the first section we typically look, look for here is credibility. So these are media features, certifications, any, any other kind of credibility badges. And now looking through this page, we don't have any traditional credibility badges. However, the proof points that are on this page are from you know, clients that are so high profile and they're done in a way where the full name is there, their title or role at the company is there, their company name is there and sort of the company size or company revenue level is there. So, you know, the, the proof points are so strong and so impressive that really they double as, as credibility badges. So, you know, really there's, uh, you know, there's no need for any sort of typical credibility badges like, you know, as seen in Forbes or Insider or whatever. Um, you know, I think I think that stuff never hurts. But at the same time, these are, are so potent. And the other proof points that he has down here, uh, you know, he's got a, a screenshot of an email of someone from Amazon, someone from Shopify, someone from HubSpot, someone from Drift. He's got a DM from Noah Kagan. So lots of really, really uh, high profile testimonials that, that really uh, give a lot of credibility. Uh, the next thing we're looking for is product info and this page crushes it on the product info. So with information products, with digital products, I should say, we're always looking for 
curiosity bullets, right? These are, you know, one of the most powerful levers for selling information. And uh, as you can see, I'm not going to read through every single one of these, but there is just a wall of curiosity bullets here, which is great. And they're well written, right? They're they're specific, they're intriguing, they tease a lot of different, you know, payoffs, $112,000 per month with a tiny content team, right? And now typically best practice for the first, you always want your first and your last bullet to be the strongest ones on the list. And you want the first bullet to reframe or rephrase the benefit from the headline, right? So we can see this is done really, really well. $112,000 and 500 per month with a tiny content team. See step-by-step -step how we turn blog posts into monthly recurring revenue so you can scale your business more predictably. Boom, that is the entire promise of this offer, right? And it's it's rephrased really succinctly here. Uh, the three types of blog posts you need to write for this key slope strategy to work how to find, find content topics in 60 seconds, you know, it goes on and on and on. So we'll just, let's take a look at the last bullet just to see how, how well it, it stacks up. Uh, okay. What to do if you're a business owner, not a content creator. Do this if you want to leverage your time and only work two days a week. So this is more of a objection handling bullet, right? Because a lot of people clicking through, clicking on this ad, reading this page are probably in that camp, right? Where they're like, hey, I have a business. I'm looking for serious leverage. I'm looking for real, you know, I'm looking to really move the needle here. I'm not looking to write, you know, a bunch of blog posts. So I think this is still a strong bullet. I think it probably could have been stronger and, and you know, there probably uh, could have been one used from kind of somewhere else in this list that, that maybe had a bit more juice. But overall still, I like this. And, you know, I'd say top marks for, uh, for these curiosity bullets. The only thing that could have been done to improve them is to add page numbers, right? So looking at the looking at the prehead here, we can see that it's new playbook, and we can see here, um, and this is one thing actually that I didn't remark on when we looked at this first, is you actually get a future pace of the fulfillment of the product, right? So it's like just below the button, it says, hey, you'll receive the digital playbook to your email in 60 seconds, right? So you know you're gonna get instant gratification within 60 seconds, which is, you know, really, really helps, um, you know, increase the level of desire for the product. But because it says digital playbook, that makes me think that it is, you know, it is a digital, like it's, it, it, it's, a, it's a written asset, right? It's not a video course. So uh, looking down here at these curiosity bullets, the one way to really ramp up curiosity even more is to tease out exactly where they can get the payoff on the bullet, right? So for example, you know, you might write the three types of blog posts you need to write for this ski slope strategy to work, page seven, right? Uh, and now... One limitation here, you know, just judging by the fact that this only costs $4.99 and looking at how many bullets there are, I suspect this asset's probably not that long, right? It probably doesn't have that many pages in it. So there might be an issue where a lot of these bullets get paid off on the same page. And so what you could do there is you could get even more granular, right? So you could say, you know, page five, paragraph two, or page seven, line 18 or something like that, right? Because it really just, it, you know, it creates that, that irresistible itch, right? For the, for the buyer to say, oh man, like I'm, the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna crack this thing open and you know, I'm gonna go look up page seven, line 18 because that one bullet, it just hooked me, right? And that's, that's really what makes people buy info products, especially low ticket ones like this, is like they can see just one bullet that's super juicy and that'll be enough to get them to pull the trigger. Um, so moving on, uh, the next thing we're going to look at is social proof. So, you know, some of the criteria we use to analyze social proof here, images or videos, uh, is the customer avatar represented? Does it overcome objections and does it, uh, demonstrate before and after? So, uh, there are some testimonies up here at the top, which we'll look at. So great headshots, uh, title, you know, uh, company name, company revenue. So lots of really specific details here, uh, which are really, really nice. So there's no video testimonials. Uh, however, on the flip side, that helps the page load a little bit faster, so that's great. And again, I think because these are so high profile, and not only does he have these quotes here, but he has the actual screenshots of the messages, right? And so this is, you know, obviously so much more persuasive to be able to look at these different screenshots from, you know, his inbox and from his Twitter DMs and, and stuff like that. So uh, even though they're not video testimonials, they're they're very, very persuasive. Uh, and they don't really overcome objections, right? Like they're all, basically all of these testimonials are like, oh my God, can I hire you, right? And so you get the sense that 
because he like this guy must just be so good at what he does and his his method must be so effective that all these people are trying to hire him right they're they're you know they're high profile companies you know in this case no kagan's like what would it take for you to be full-time with sumo i'm 100 percent serious you know so i think even though they don't overcome objections they still really really do a lot of work so uh love the testimonials there uh, and then all the other CTAs are great. Um, they kind of, you know, they have these varying subheads, but they include the price. They always said they have the exact same button every time. Uh, they future pace the fulfillment of the product. So you really get that sense of like instant gratification, which is, which is really, really, really great. Uh, product shot, all good stuff. So moving down, um, last thing is there is no FAQ on this page. Um, so that's not present. However, uh, there is lots of copy on the page. So if you look at like sort of once they finish, once the, 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 the bullet wall is done, uh, there are uh, several additional copy sections that help sort of overcome objections and, and really sort of close the deal. And, you know, you could argue that for a $4.99, you know, PDF, essentially, which is what I'm guessing this is, uh, you know, an FAQ may have been overkill, right? And there is still copy that overcomes objections here. Um, you know, again, I'm not going to read through all of it, but you know, like this works even if you don't want to write blog posts, right? This is paying off that promise in the sub headline without writing a single word. Um, so anyway, I think, you know, no FAQ, but uh, I, I don't think that's really taking away from the effectiveness of this page. All right, the last thing we're going to look at is the offer, right? So uh, criteria for this First off is desired outcome. And so, you know, the desired outcome is crystal clear, right? We're going to turn your blog into a seven figure revenue channel, right? That's really, really clear. And I think it's paid off really, really well. You really get the sense that you're going to learn how to do it, right? So I think that's, that's there in spades. Um, the product name I would say is, you know, I rated it a six out of 10. I think the ski slope strategy, you know, it creates some intrigue because you don't really know like what it is. But at the same time, there's there's really not, it doesn't give you any kind of context as to how it works, right? And I think, you know, if there was a way to provide a little bit of context or be a little bit more specific about the method, um, it, you know, it, it would have made for a slightly more um, powerful and kind of compelling product name. But still, it's got, it's got the uniqueness factor, which I think definitely works for it. Um, next is the pricing. I mean, the pricing is excellent, $4.99, you know, anyone essentially can afford that. So it's within reach for, for basically anyone. And I'm sure there's, you know, numerous subsells on the back end uh, to get the, the average order value up, which is why this, you know, this offer has been running for so long, but the pricing is excellent. The value also, I think, feels really strong. Again, like, you know, value is, it, it, it's a symbiotic relationship with price, right? And so, you know, for $4.99, when you look at this giant wall of bullets, you know, and you look at all the stuff, all the like tactical secrets you're gonna learn when you acquire this product, you really get the sense that you're getting a lot of value for your money. So, so that's great. Next is bonuses. Yeah, so we don't, there are no bonuses on this, uh, no bonuses on this page. However, uh, with a price at $4.99, like a low ticket product like this, I, I really don't think a bonus is necessary. Um, it also sets things up nicely to position, you know, upsells later on in the funnel. So yeah, I think I'm sure that's a, that's an intentional decision here. Uh, next is a guarantee. So let's find the guarantee here. Yeah, this is an excellent guarantee, right? No questions asked one year money back guarantee, right? Forget 14 days, forget 30 days, forget 60 days. You can buy this and refund it 364 days from now, right? Which is great. Really, really awesome. So uh, hard not to want to pull the trigger on this given the low price point, given the value. And then on top of that, you can still refund like, you know, come on, who, who can say no to that? Uh, the last two criteria in terms of evaluating the offer are urgency and scarcity. And there's some urgency here. Uh, definitely like not, there's no countdown timer, right? Uh, now it's an evergreen offer, right? So, it, you know, in a sense, um, Having, you know, a countdown timer would, you know, potentially detract from the authenticity of the offer, right? So I think, again, I'm sure that's an intentional uh, decision. But some of this closing copy that comes after the bullets does create a little bit of urgency. Um, again, I won't, I won't sort of dig into it too much, but, but there is a little bit there. Uh, and then no scarcity, right? It's a digital product, it's a PDF. Uh, so there's no, you know, there's no limited quantity here, right? Um, but ultimately this is a really, really strong page, right? Like that's the bottom line. And again, I'm not surprised uh, that I've been seeing ads uh, for this for months. This is my first time actually looking at the page. And again, I have to say, I'm really, really impressed. 
Uh, it's super, super strong. You know, great copy, great offer, great design, you know, great layout, super simple, fast load, looks awesome on mobile, super strong CTA. I mean, yeah, overall, it's an excellent page. So there's a, you know, there's a lot to learn from this page. Um, and uh, yeah, I hope you enjoyed this analysis and uh, look forward to seeing you guys next week on the next edition of Inspector Lander.